Linux. It went well with either open source, Stack Cover, and Debrisim. We'll not show a lot of pieces of the code because it's not that interesting. Uh, we'll try to explain how Starks work for those who were not on Teleweb blockchain. We were the Starker uh, at the, the workshop. In brief. Yeah. Uh, we'll briefly explain. Uh, mm -hmm. You need it for recording, I can just speak more loud. Uh, so, first. For, for those who was not on the Teleweb blockchain week, we'll use the short review how Starks work. Uh, and where you should pay attention, like so you don't make the system unsound when you make the proof. Uh, we will focus mostly on the most powerful primitive of the stars, which is Fry, uh, Interactive Oracle Proof of Proximity. And we will, instead of, the, like, instead of showing the code, we wanted to show some applications of the start. Uh, initially, the, we wanted to show the Alex Day people of the start, which is unfortunately not the start, without a huge modification. Uh, and, and also, when it builds us here, uh, we can quickly discuss the uh, application for BDFs, how we can use start, start for BDFs in terms of application starts. Uh, but at the end of the presentation, we'll also show the transparent weakness scheme which you can use, uh, which you can make out of Fry, and potential improvements to it and difficulties, why you cannot like, just naively make it. So the level will be quite intense. Uh, so just be prepared for it to be worth it. Uh, Constantine will lead the presentation, mainly I will uh, answer the questions if something happens. Uh, the format is, if you don't understand something, like you really want to ask a question, you should raise a hand and we should stop and answer your question. Okay, uh, thank you for coming, as Alex told. Uh, we won't speak about our implementation of Stacks called Hoarder. Uh, because of recent uh, appearance of new proof systems such as Plonk and because of our work on commitment schemes, we decided to give the motivation of our work and cause uh, it has a truth, its source in Stacks. I will start from uh, the definition of Stacks, show how they will work, and then I will try to show how some components of Stack, uh, mainly uh, the final step, the fry, can be combined with, for example, Plonk to achieve a fully transparent and succinct snack. Uh, yeah, the next one. And the, ro the roadmap is the following. Reminder of stacks. Uh, I will briefly describe all the steps. Uh, the first arithmetization called air, the second, and uh, the fry itself. Then I will speak about what a polynomial commitment scheme is, uh, gate commitment, which is to mostly used now, and uh, how we can build new commitment scheme from, from Fry. And then I will try to speak about possible applications of our commitment scheme to, to make full transparent snacks. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, this is the formal definition of algebraic intermediate representation. Uh, it may look quite weird, but I will just explain on the board what, what does it exactly mean, and you will see that it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, AI is just a kind of register machine, so you choose your parameters, F, which is just a finite field, which should be a residue field, um, so a prime field in other words. And uh, W is your number of registers. So we'll just fix them. And then double them. And T is just the length of your trace, is the number of steps. Uh, that your program just execute. And at every step, you just modify uh, the contents of every register. <coughs> so in fact, your program is encoded as a matrix of size T uh, cross W. But the question is, 
how can, what are the possible ways to modify the content. And uh, in fact, this is how the stack works. Uh, there is some kind of, rest of restrictions uh, on how to modify the values. On each step, uh, we should apply the same set of polynomial functions. Let, me, let them call uh, the trace constraints. Let me call them P1, P2, up to PK. And they should be applied at every step. Uh, every such polynomial is a function in 2W variable. Uh, the first uh, W part of variables is just the oldest state of registers, and the next one is the new state of registers. Uh, and the most simple example, I think many of you have shown it many times, it's a Fibonacci sequence. Uh, so the first register is just 1, 1, 2, and the second is 1, 2, 3, and so on. So uh, the new value of second register is just the sum uh, of the values uh, in previous registers, and the function in 2W variables is uh, Uh, x1 plus x2 minus uh, is equal to zero. What is x? What is y? Uh, x, I call the old value of registers to be x and the new value of registers to be y. So I think this is x and this is y. x1, x2, y1, y2. So we just apply the sum function. And the new value of y is just the previous value of x. And the same set of functions is applied at, at every step. But sure, in uh, real applications, for example... So x is a average or like what? Because it's a function. Uh, okay. the previous, x is the previous value and y is the new value. And the same set of functions applied at every step. And of course, just uh, here we have just naive functions, but in reality, if you try to encode some uh, weird uh, circuits, you will have uh, polynomial relations uh, which can be cubic, quadratic, it doesn't really matter. And you can mix the x and y variables as you wish. And uh, the, main, the main thing here I want to, to stress is the difference from uh, a runtime constraint system. When you try to encode some gadget in the, in the runtime constraint system, so for example, hash function, and then you, when you try to use it in your circuit several times, you will need to pay every time you use uh, your hash function. So if your circuit contains three instances of the same fun of the same hash function, then you will have a triple number of gates. And the difference. Uh, and the situation with stacks is quite different because you just you encode uh, your gadget only once and then you may use it repeatedly. But you need to have some uh, pattern of uh, re repeatings. So the same set constraints should be applied at every pair of steps or, for example, at every... Uh, the distance between the, step, the steps should be at just one or two, but and this would be some kind of repeatable pattern. So guys, how many of you are familiar with rank one constraint system? Okay. Okay. Less than a half, yeah. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and the witness, the witness uh, is just the particular instance of matrix. Uh, the values of the matrix are just are taken uh, so that those relations will, will hold. That's it. Uh, by the way, I have only spoken of uh, trace constraints. Another thing is how to embed public inputs. And this is done by boundary constraints. They're just tuples of 
uh, coordinates and value. The first coordinate is just the step at which to, to apply this boundary constraint. The next coordinate is the number of register and the value alpha. So the boundary constraints just says that uh, the value of this cell of matrix is alpha. This is quite simple. Uh, I think the next one. Can you go back? What was the last uh, line? Mm -hmm. No, no, this is the next one. So can you go back? Uh, yeah, just second sentence. You need all your constraints. Trace constraints should be satisfied, and. Uh, Because p is a function, every element of the set p is a function in two double variables, and uh, the first half of variables is the previous uh, row of matrix, and the next one is the next row. This is what is written uh, on the last line. Any questions? No? Okay. Uh, the next one. Okay, well, as we know, the best way to encode any proof systems is to reduce them to, uh, to reduce even the witness to polynomials. Now we have just uh, the boundary constraints and the trace and the trace constraints are presented in form of uh, polynomials, but our witness is just you know, is just matrix. And then we need to somehow transform our uh, A representation into the form which is. Uh, most suitable to just to structs itself, uh, and we need the kind of routing. The routing uh, means that we want to place the values of our matrix, which is our witness, into 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 encoded into into a polynomial. Again, this is just the definition. Again, it looks weird, and now I will explain uh, what can be done. In the simplest case, in reality, there are some some difficulties, but nevertheless, the main the main thing is the following: uh, we choose two groups. We have just our finite field, and we take uh, two groups, G1 and G2, G2 inside. The multiplicative subgroup, multiplicative subgroup of our field, and the first one should be of size t, and the second one should be of size w. So, uh, in practice, we want to we want to be uh, we want our field to have um, a large to a density. So, just. Uh, its multiplicative group, the order of multipl multiplicative group is divided by a large power of 2, and uh, our trace length and the number of our registers to be a power of 2. So if it is not the case, we can just simply extend both parameters. There is no problem with it. Uh, and then and let uh, G1 be the generator of the first group, and now let G is the generator of the first group and nu is the generator of the second group. And we just uh, renumerate our cell, uh, the cells of our matrix with elements generated by these two groups. So this cell will be just G1, G1 raised to 2, and so on. And this will just use the variable ah. So the cell uh, with index i, j, uh, will be rated with GI new yeah minus one. Uh, now this 
you catch the idea. And then, 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 I will take the function f on the domain uh, g1 cross g2 to have these values in f. Uh, and the value on g i minus 1, new g minus 1, will be just the value of this sum. Uh, then we'll see how to, and this is this will be our witness. Yeah, just just for uh, this is very for this is a very formal definition for those who would want to do the practical application of this and just understand how this works. This formal definition it just says take every row, concatenate them all together, and do the interpolation over the uh, multiplicative subgroup in a prime file. It's just very simple. Uh, well, you, you, can see, you can see the same structure in many systems where you want to encode your witness as a polynomial. So you literally place your witness values. You say, there exists a witness polynomial. And I want to require values of this witness polynomial on certain points to be equal to my witness values. And here you do the same. You just take every row, you can take, concatenate them all together. You get the polynomial, you get set of values, which is size t by w. So you just need the subgroup, which is t by w size, and you do a simple manipulation, which is that just a fast Fourier transformation. It's from the practical perspective and less a formal definition. Even this one doesn't show the full essence. Well, this one is too complicated explanation of actually how it works. The simplest one is you just do interpolation. Yeah, you can so treat yeah. them all as points. You treat them all as a, like values as a point. This is a point, mm -hmm. and well, the previous matrix contains a value at this point. This is your requirement for polynomial. And you strictly define the polynomial of degree t by w minus 1 by t by w points. So it's this. In optimized, optimized applications, you don't think you can detonate all together because this is going to be a large single of t. You can say, I will have not one, but w witness polynomials. This is, doesn't change the essence of the start. And you say, my witness polynomial number one is just for register number one. So you do larger number of interpolations, but each of those is going to be much smaller size. This is a solid optimization which is used everywhere, which is used by stack bar, by uh, uh, the Riggs guys, like this is an efficient way to have to implement it, but here we don't talk too much about the optimizations because there are too many of them, literally. Uh, we just try to explain the essence of the start. You, it's not just a sort of star itself, it's this common technique to encode the witness as a polynomial and then have a relationship about the polynomial instead of relationship about the values. And Kensetti will explain the next yeah, step for this. Explain how this uh, the last uh, long equation comes from um, why do you just encode this way? Okay, uh, remember that every uh, trace polynomial uh, is applied to every pair of, uh, of constraints. And then, just what will happen if we'll take, we'll take our mask to be just uh, the consecutive values of the group, of the second group? I'll just write it down. Uh, F uh, new one x. B, F, one, X, X, up to the last one, F, U, X. This is just uh, the previous set of registers and the new values are F, U, one, so one, X, squared x f okay um, so the first this is polynomial p is our polynomial is in two double variables 
uh, the first uh, the first set of values that we just uh, put into polynomials uh, f on the consecutive values of uh, the elements of the second group multiplied by x, and uh, next we just take the same function and multiply not only the elements of our first group but also by the generator of the first group. Then, what will, what will happen if we take x uh, to be just unity? Then, Sorry, to be what? Hmm? To, to be, be just one? unity, unity just, as element of the field. Uh, one. And then, these values will be the first row of our matrix. This will be the second row of our matrix. So we take x to be 1, then we just encode uh, our constraint on the first pair of rows. If we take x to be uh, generator of the first group, g, then we encode the second pair. And then, uh, if we take uh, the raised to, to square, then this way will be encoded the third, the third pair of, of uh, rows, and so on. So this, uh, this equation will hold for all elements of our first group. Then we'll just return back. Our mask, uh, our set of masks, just those parameters. Our constraint polynomial is the same uh, is the same polynomial taken from a representation, a representation. and our domain our domain is just the set uh, of elements of the first group. So our domain polynomial Q will be just uh, the product X minus minus every element, and we know that you know, uh, this element forms a cyclic group. So this will be written as a simple form uh, X T minus one, and this is very important. This is a very important fact that our group has. Uh, such that our polynomial has such a comp complex representation cause it to be calculated efficiently. Yeah. Uh, so we exploit the structure with, of some groups with, yeah. with one exception here. Uh, this polynomial will hold on every. Yeah, pair, except, except the last one. Yeah, enumerated from here. So it should virtually also hold on this one, but there is nothing after. But we're in a cyclic group, so we would literally link the last row with the first one. Where the relationship doesn't hold, so you have to cut one root out of there. But it's still efficiently calculatable. Or another possibility is to extend your trace. Yeah, but this gives you but computational work. It's quite a technical detail. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to, um, just for some, well, this is strict definition, it works. Uh, just for uh, intuition, the same trick was used by Zachary and Ariel Gibbison in their plum proof system that you can multiply the argument of the polynomial by the generator in certain, uh, in certain cases and this gives you by like a displacement, a time displacement or just uh, innovation displacement. Let's go back to Fibonacci example with 1, 1, uh, 1, 2, uh, what, 2, 3. I will only work in, like, on this part, on these two rows just for now. Uh, by definition of the witness polynomial over x and let's say I use it omega as a generator, omega in the force equal to one because I have four elements here. Um, by definition, this one would be this cell. Um, one would be this one. It's uh, another one. Well, not to represent it, but here. And this one is two. So I just enumerated them one by one by the uh, So why it's called routing? Because it allows you to navigate in uh, space by number selecting the register and time by selecting the time step. Uh, even when at the real application, you will have separate witnesses for separate registers. You will not need to navigate in space. You still need to navigate in time. So what? 
this is the definition function over x. What happens if I look at the function of x multiplied by omega squared? S will actually give me, let's say, like this, to keep it formal. Uh, omega is 0, so it's 1. 1 here, omega squared. It will give me 1, it will give me this all. If I take my modified function at omega the first power, give me 2, so I literally displace my time by one step. Uh, that's why it's called the row thing. <laughs> even even I, I choose the, not the easiest example to see, too many ones here. But if you do the same for the next very rows, it will be much more representative. So this here just allows you to navigate. This, this is why it's called a row. Um, yes, and for this, you'll just, everything you want, from practical perspective, um, well, you can transform polynomial in this form, over x, into polynomial displaced one, by very simple and efficiently parallelizable operation, which it takes a linear number of multiplications. This is also very easy. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So this, what you would have in the practical implementation with all the optimization, you don't need to navigate in space. Even while in the original papers, everywhere you say you take all the witness, put it all together, use one witness polynomial, you never do it in practice. Uh, so you only need to navigate in space. Everything else falls. And to be precise, it is not from the original paper, but by the next one, uh, which is called the deep techniques. Uh, well, it's something that will for um, Okay, you can switch to the okay, Just a question about the other. Can you go back? So here, when you say for all these in F, so F here is the, the field that you work over or only the subgroup? Uh, oh, no, it's for all X for which the other main polynomial is equal to zero. So where you have the vanishing polynomial. Okay. But, I mean, it's a part of the next thing. But, yeah. Uh, so it's not precise the ally just sketch, but no. Uh, there are some technicalities, uh, just second of out of domain, which I don't want to speak about, just... Sorry, no. Uh, oh, okay, from Chuck Weir. Uh, but what's going on? Uh, remember from the previous slide, the previous slide, uh, that if x is a root of domain polynomial, then it should be the root of uh, the slash construction. And here the slash construction is taken as a new iterator. And so on every such, on every x uh, from our domain, which is just the elements of the first group, this fraction should be a polynomial. Yeah. And uh, we just take random coefficients from the verifier in order to uh, combine all those functions into one. It's just a standard technique. Uh, so, what do you mean by fraction? Hmm? What do you mean by fraction? Uh, yeah, fraction. here, j just to explain less convenient with this. So you see that one, uh, uh, Q polynomial is one issue. But rational function. Yeah. Well, well, but if you constrain whole on this fraction, so I mean literally this construction means that you constrain whole for a witness. So it's a, it means that for every x for which like we showed the simple example, it is equal to zero, and q polynomial is equal to zero. So you can divide one over another. Because it has a simple literally at this point. It means that if you do this division, then this construction is not a rational function. But it's a polynomial of the degree which you can predict by constructing your system. And um, yeah, just for those who for a technical perspective, you want to have this uh, constraints to low degree. So this polynomial, which will be part of the fry, will not grow to very large degree. So if you have a few constraints, or the, like a small number of constraints with a large degree, you would rather prefer to break it. And constraints with a degree 2, well, 3 is not good because you always work, uh, work with multiples of 2, so like 2 or 4, but not large from optimization perspective. Uh, here's just to mention why you can divide this, why it's, this operation will give you a polynomial, which is important for the next step of the right, but not some function, because you can define it as a function, but you will then, g of x will not be a polynomial. 
Well, P is the P is the polynomial of constraints. Uh -huh. Which and now, now you just not take x and y as the two next steps, but you say, well, I replace my x one by taking the weakness polynomial, which is properly masked. Uh, Q is just a one issue polynomial. It just defines you where your constraint holds. And just if you want to hold on every row except the last one, it will have this form. Uh, yeah, this is a definition of binary polynomial. This technique is used everywhere, uh, even in the cross 16 for those who are much, I think, much more familiar. And once again, I want to stress that it is not the lab protocol as it is written in the paper, but it's nevertheless the, the main idea. Uh, okay, so our problem is reduced to the following. We want to show that the function g, uh, gx is not a rational function, but a polynomial. A polynomial of degree, uh, which is the same that the order of the first group. And we need some tool to just uh, to check this efficiently. Uh, the next one. Uh, yeah. And the problem which we are trying to solve is proximity testing. We just have some access to function f. I mean, Oracle access uh, that uh, means that you may only query some values. So just the verifier asks some values from the function, and the prover just uh, gets the evaluation at some points. And we want to. Mm. And the verifier wants to know that this function is indeed uh, a low degree polynomial. Let me show. Just for definition of Oracle, here I just skip a scat, I think, uh, uh, at least in the draft. Uh, so let, let, let's talk about efficiency. So you want to have the, well, you could have this way solved. Well, you can, you can prove that GeoFax is a low degree polynomial, but for example, using the k permitment because it actually gives you the degree bound, but we are not here for this. Um, so, what you want at the end of the day is efficiency between communication between prover and the, and the verifier. So, you don't want, and to check this relationship everywhere, you need all the values and do like linear number of calculations. So, you, this is why it's called the Oracle access. First of all, your prover tells, I know some set of values. And I commit to them. So imagine it's just a uh, set of numbers which you break apart number by number and give it to someone. You can ask for certain for those numbers one by one, and the, those will not be changed. In principle, you can ask for all of them, but then you do yeah. the work which is enormous. But you can pick one by one and. The small number of values which you will pick from this trusted source, and in, in reality, this trusted source is a market tree. Uh, those set of values will be enough for you to say, well, whether all of those values came from some polynomial, or all of those values together with some proof which you will get, uh, will come from the work from the polynomial which was, was small degree or unlikely to be small degree. So, uh, yeah, we will proceed with the formal part and then the informal part. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh, there's no need to explain it in other words. No. Uh, okay. Next one. So the naive answer was, to, as Alex told, to query all the values of our function domain D. But you know, the domain is really large. It, it will be enormous number of queries. And this is the thing we, we are trying to avoid. And the question is, next one. Uh, can this be achieved with logarith logarithmic number of queries, where g, as you remember, is the degree of our witness f? The answer is yes, this is really an ingenious uh, protocol, uh, the formal definition of so the problem we are trying uh, to solve. Uh, we are working in interactive uh, oracle proof model. Uh, Anybody is familiar with interactive oracle proof model? Okay, uh, then, then I will try to explain. Uh, interactive, proof, interactive proofs, I think everybody knows. Uh, BSP, BCP, BCP, BCP model. Uh, the, the proof is data, the proof is data. 
is not sent just as little pieces of information. They are sent uh, in terms of oracles or large tables. And the verifier, the verifier he, when he received this table, this large table, he can only query a small number of points. This is called a PCP model. And interactive oracle proof model is just combines those two, goal, those two goals. This is an interactive protocol from which every message from the prover is a kind of oracle or a table from which the verifier then queries only a small amount of bits, uh, send some response, and the next answer from prover is again a table. And uh, in, when, we speak of, when we speak about interactive oracle proof of proximity, the first message format, format should be our oracle to the function uh, f, which we want to prove that it is a polynomial flow degree. Uh, and in fact, every, every, every other oracle will also be a relation of some function. I'm speaking case of, of Rai. Uh, can you really remind it for the people with the uh, hamming distance? It's like, yeah. Well, yeah, here, I mean, here um, again, I'm sure, just, yeah. you have domain D, you have two functions, F and G. Any functions, not polynomials. And they have some values. And then just count the number of points uh, in which they are different. Here, for example, is two. And I just uh, take the relative coming distance, so I just divide this number by the set of domain. So that my metric will be between zero and one. And this is just a metric. It has all properties of metrics, symmetry, uh, the triangle inequality. So you're basically talking about Ritzel among those, yeah? Yeah, because Fry, Fry uh, works on it with them. I think the next one. These are the parameters of Fry, and uh, it's uh, just exactly takes logarithmic number of queries. But uh, what I want to stress here is the soundness. Soundness um, uses some parameter delta. Our initial function, our initial function, which will provide Oracle for. Oracle for. Uh, it, can, uh, it may not be a polynomial. It may be some function, some function, uh, f, which, is, uh, which has some distance from the space of ritz salman codes. And Fry is unable to distinguish uh, precisely the functions which are exact polynomials and the functions uh, which are, which have some distance from the space of these common codes. I, I, I just yeah. I, just I, I think here we will do just another solid example. Okay. So for initially problem, we have a polynomial. Let's let's just say we have a polynomial with an oracle axis. Uh, we got it somehow from the prover. So for um, for a capital, it will be a polynomial. Like we. Uh, a priori knows that this is a polynomial, just to show you how the file works. And we get it, uh, so from the main, um, we get the relation, so let's, let's say our domain is small, it's just four elements, so one, two, three, and four. And then they have a function. Um, for a small letter, it's just some function. Uh, for this, oh well, one, two, three, four wasn't the widest choice, but okay. Um, let's and else I know that degree of this polynomial, uh, let's say is equal to zero, so I will just have this a lot of ones, um, and I have an oracle access to this too. Let's say this is different, like this. It's no longer a polynomial of degree one, it's looks like a polynomial of two for each of our spaces. So, um, it, those are my, in principle, oracle accesses as I would kind of simulate them as a table where I can create for value. Um, so what would I do and what would I get as a result of the prior protocol? Uh, I kind of read all the values at once, because if I would, I would just interpolate this locally by myself trusted source, and get an answer whether 
whether there was a value, say, God, or from low degree polynomial, just from some function. So if I would get this in full, I would interpolate this and see, well, this is indeed a polynomial with degree zero, just the constant. For this one, I would do the same work, and I would get degree which is more of this than zero. But I cannot have an access to everything. So I cannot hope to get a strict answer. So I can only get an answer with some probability, which is soundness, and for a delta parameter. Delta parameters will de delta parameter will tell me in how many points. I want to be sure that this polynomial doesn't deviate from sample, not just from exact one, but from some polynomial of degree zero. Um, under under the same oracle. So these two evaluations or two oracles they deviate in one point. So in this case, my delta is one fourth. So let's say I want to distinguish between two cases where it's exactly the polynomial of certain degree, up to certain degree, or when it's one fourth close, so it's only different in one point in my system case, but not further, so not in two points. So I'm okay with one, and not more. For this, so I fix my parameter del delta, which will tell me how many steps of the prior protocol I have to run, which at the end of the day, from practical perspective, will tell you how, what is your process at the end of the day. Uh, but let's say I want to be less sensitive. So I'm okay with delta being one half. So I will allow the, someone to give me values, not exactly from the polynomial, but from some function which deviates in two cells here. Then my delta is larger, and the property of the fiber label is this up to certain conditions, which we will not talk here. It will give you larger soundness. So your proof size will potentially be smaller. For, and if you want to be if I want to be sure that this is only different in one cell with, let's say, 100 bits of security, my proof is going to be larger than in the case if I want to be sure that it's different, not in one, but at maximum two, at two cells with the same 100 bits of security. Uh, this set of delta parameters is important. We will show why it's important on the, on the latter steps. Uh, but all the improvements over the FRI protocol, uh, at least for now, uh, they were to improve the soundness, so it improves the second term in this minimal function, and also uh, say what is like what is your delta up to which you can even use the fraction. But we will not touch this in too much details. Yeah. I have a question. So how can you how you, how you map the number of points that these polynomials deviate to the bit of security? Oh uh, well, I mean this is a soundness error. It basically tells you what is the chance that you were cheated. Um, if you want uh, to explain uh, to explain all the parameters here, but in fact, the only thing that is important and the thing that on the care of this parameter delta, so we, we decide we decide <coughs> how much uh, uh, according to this parameter delta, as Alex told. Uh, it means how how much year we, we can take. So this is the space of these normal codes, and this is just the delta blow in this space. Yeah, we take just the circle of radius delta, and this is a function which is just in those delta blowing. For this function with uh, parameter delta, we'll pass pi. Of course, it doesn't mean that uh, this function is polynomial. But I want to stress another thing. Why nothing? Why this is not important for uh, for stocks? Because as I have said, we need to show that some function, some witness function, is a polynomial. But if uh, normal deltas, uh, the prover is able to just to pass fry then just uh, this means that he knows some function which is in this delta radius, but this is not a polynomial. And the only honest witness for Stux is a polynomial, but it doesn't matter because we have uh, decoding algorithms such as uh, Sudan decoding algorithm or uh, Walsh Berlkamp algorithm, algorithm, which just gives us the proof of knowledge. They are just uh, very efficient polynomial. And what do I mean to say? If just prove who knows, not on the oracle, but 
the function itself. If he is able to provide any function which is close, then uh, he will just use those uh, algorithm of decoding and he will get uh, the, just the polynomial which will satisfy all the conditions, but... Yeah, uh, this, 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 this is the trick. Yeah, this is actually the essence of the at least deep alive protocol. So, yeah, here everything we were taking before was about the polynomials. I mean, we assumed that the prover was honest. But we just encode the original problem. The sense of the day, this is a probabilistic problem. So what we want to say is, uh, okay, let's say that the verifier is satisfied with all of the conditions and like all the checks we've put here. It means that certain values from the oracle, and in principle, prover knows the oracle in full. <coughs> yeah, we, that's, assume that's we assume that the prover knows the oracle in full, so he has access to all the values locally. He can do whatever he wants with them. And he satisfies the verifier. Even if the oracle was not exactly the values of the polynomial. But they were just close. And there is an algorithm for the prover himself to take those values, decode a polynomial from them, and this polynomial will be the true witness. So the polynomial, even, even if the prover didn't know the witness, but he passed all the checks with all the enormous number of bits of security, he, in principle, would be able to take all those values and find the true weakness easily in a polynomial time. So in principle, this is a proof of knowledge. And if Prover has satisfied the verifier, then he can get the knowledge of the true witness. Uh, this is not very intuitive, but in principle, this is a proof of knowledge. As I think we need to speed up a little yeah. bit. Uh, so just limitations, uh, which is quite common used I think as most of you to run one constraint system and there are many tools, uh, libraries to encode programs in the runtime constraint systems and there are not so many tools to encode in stack air. So I think this is just a limitation. Uh, as I have told, uh, the property of air is so that stack uh, is just works well only for repeatable computations and the proof size is large, especially when we compare it to snacks where the proof is a constant size. But uh, the final part of stacks is really ingenious uh, and maybe we can apply it to some other primitives. Because mainly, uh, next one, uh, what Fry shows us is that some function is a polynomial. Maybe uh, we're able to apply the strong properties of Fry to other cryptic-related problems. And uh, we try to do this with polynomial commitment. Uh, this is a form of definition, and just what is going on. Uh, Prover has polynomial, but he wants to, not, he doesn't show this polynomial to us. He just opens, he just um, gets us the commitment to this polynomial. So we, as verifier, may be sure that later this polynomial won't be changed. When verifier sees the commitments, he only knows that the prover has some polynomial in mind, and moreover, the polynomial is of fixed degree. Uh, the degree of polynomial is bounded by some parameter taken in the top phase. Uh, then, at, at the later steps of the protocol, we ask the prover to open the committed polynomial at some point, and the verifier uh, just opens a evaluation of the polynomial and he also sends us some proof of correctness so that we later may check that this open is, insist, is related to the committed polynomial itself. So it's quite simple. Um, next one, yeah. What is, what is this? Um, is this sigma, right? I'm sure. In the is just polynomial itself. Yeah, we yeah. were speaking about uh, polynomials of some fields. Uh, I think we don't have enough time to, key, uh, to cover key commitment, which is just uh, the main polynomial commitment schemes used in uh, using null protocols. Uh, but what, what's the main point here? Uh, 
first of all, by using some kind of fraction, and the fraction is is the main thing that Fry Fry works with, which shows that function this function is not really 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 rational. Which yeah, you cannot just skip this part. So th this is the same technique which is which was applied in the Fry, which basically tells let's say it has a polynomial phi. And if v of i is the true value of this polynomial at this point, and this, uh, well, if you subtract it, then you will get to zero at this point. It has a school this is the numerator. And if it's a root, if it's this numerator has a root at this point that you can divide it and get another polynomial which is just nothing less. So you can. This is very. This is a relation exploited by uh, Kate commitment. And also because as a setup space you kind of limit to how what is the degree of the polynomial you can commit to. You can be quite sure that your initial commitment was actually a polynomial up to a certain degree. And after you do the division, you cannot you cannot commit to the rational function. Unless you've broken some elliptic curve crypto, you could not do this and it means that a lot later as opening space, you could also not face the proof and say, this is my commitment, this is my sum values, this is my proof. If everything passes and with a high probability, uh, it was the true value of this polynomial for which you committed at this point. Otherwise, you have broken the When then this is a separate problem. Yeah. So the main thing that this parameter alpha is not should not be known uh, neither for commit or prove or nor for verify. And there are many zero knowledge schemes such as Blanc or as. Is that, yes, I'm not mistaken. Sonic. Sonic. Uh, the only uh, the only one thing uh, because the only one reason they require the just a setup ceremony is because they are based on kit commitment. And so if we're able to replace kit commitment with something that requires only a transparent setup or any setup then uh, those uh, commitment schemes, uh, those uh, zero schemes will be transparent by, by design. Uh, okay, this is just uh, the, main, the, main the main protocol of fry based criminal commitment. I just want uh, to explain what is going on. First, first, uh, the commitment. Uh, at commit phase, uh, we want to be sure, we as a verify want to be sure that the function under commitment is a polynomial and not some just random, random set of values. And the commitment here is again an oracle as in fry. And so we run one instance of fry at commit phase uh, to be sure that uh, the function under commitment is a polynomial. And then we run another instance of fry at open phase, but this time with respect to the oldest fraction. And again, we are trying to show that this is a polynomial. I think we'll skip the proof. This is the main idea why, why, we'll, why this, this will work. But there is one. Uh, one important thing between the gate commitment and the fry based commitment schemes. Uh, as I have told some minutes ago, fry is unable to distinguish between polynomials and functions which are close to them with respect to Hamming matrix. Uh, and so, if we if we are not sure that our function commit state is not even a polynomial, which function will open later? And the thing is, uh, this is our space of with some codes or just uh, low degree polynomials. This is our function for which uh, the prover gives an oracle access to. This is just the circle of our function f. And then let them intersect at some polynomials. The fact uh, this our commitment scheme will only show that uh, the opening, the opening, which will be done at the open phase, 
will be the value of, uh, of one of these polynomials at the intersection. And there is one uh, special case when delta is, cho is chosen to be uh, the unique decoding radius parameter. In this case, if there are any intersection between our function and the space of polynomials of lower degree, the intersection will contain only one point. In this particular case, we just uh, we may think that the initial commitment of the prover was not to the function, but to that one, one point of, of intersection. Uh, but when we're trying to apply our commitment schemes uh, to just real protocols such as uh, Plong, for example, um, we apply them to witness polynomials. In Plong scheme, uh, the, the verifier asks the prover to open, to open the value of a witness polynomial. And we may think that any of the points of intersection are our, value polynomial, are our witness polynomials. It, it doesn't really matter. But there is one, one important thing. The next one. Ah, this is the proof. I think we'll skip it for now. This is the relaxed version. Uh, the first proof was for unique decoding radius and uh, the relaxed version where the intersection contained more than one point and here we want to show that the opening is related to the, to the one of polynomials in, it, in, in the intersection. Uh, and another thing, uh, in Plong, in Plong the gate commitment is not used only is not used only to open the values of witness polynomials. Uh, there, the commitment is also used for speed up calculation of constraint polynomials. What do I mean about the constraint polynomial? Constraint polynomial encodes our problem. This is a polynomial that is known for both the prover and the verifier, but it is of very large degree. And then. The prover asked uh, the verifier asked the prover to send to send the opening of this constraint polynomial at some point because he doesn't he doesn't want to do a huge amount of work to relate polynomial of that degree uh, and when we speak about gate commitment we know that uh, if commitment is received then the opening of the commit of the commitment is specific specific polynomial. And we just check that the commitment is just is related to the constraint polynomial. But in this case, in this case, there are several mm -hmm, other polynomials to which uh, you know to which the opens may be provided. And when we speak about constraint polynomials, this means that the prover may send uh, the opening to another constraint polynomial, which means that he sent the answer to, to another constraint system, to another problem. This is the difference between witness polynomials and constraint polynomials. And uh, so uh, we call this problem evaluation problem, because there is no secret, secret polynomial. This is the polynomial which is known for both sides and uh, for which uh, just the verifier wants to get the opening just to speed up, to reduce his complexity, and, and so on. And the solution to the problem is the following. Uh, okay, this is our space. Again, with some more codes. Now we just, because this is the setup polynomial, which is already a polynomial, so this is inside our space. Then we take the parameter delta. And there are some other polynomials with these data radius. But data is fixed uh, at the phase. Uh, the polynomial is also known for both parts of the set of protocol. And so all other polynomials or the points in the circle are known to both sides in advance. So we just take some point uh, E1 
with such property that the value of our fixed polynomial is different from the values of uh, other polynomials in this circle. This f, uh, and this will be f, f zero, our constraint polynomial, and all this will just one, f two, f n, and if i one is such a point, such as f zero of y one, is not equal to f y of y one for for every for every y greater or equal than one. That makes sense. And this is this is the replacement of uh, the search of such a value z. Oh, sorry, a one, a one. Let the token be z one. Is uh, some kind of transparency tab. This list may be huge. Uh, decoding of, the, of, all, of all those polynomials may take a large amount of time. The search at this point is also you know, some work. But this is a setup which should be done only once, and this is fully transparent setup. And there is no need for some secret parameters uh, as done in Kate commitment. And uh, here, here, uh, in previous protocols, which just opening, opening schemes, we divide by just one line function. And here, I1 is just the point we took as a tail phase, and I2 is just the point which uh, the verifier is asked to open the value at. And you ask, you, your x is a function that is just interpolation, Lagrange interpolation function of those points with respect to values z1 and z2. Once again, the tail phase the value of f0 at uh, z1, the point which we try to open, and the value, the probability value of opening. And uh, this is the only difference from commit, from uh, polynomial committee scheme. Any questions? Uh, I think here I, sh I should summarize it a little bit different than Costa said. So um, it all comes to the problem about the polynomial relationship. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that Schwarz equal. Uh, lemma, which tells you that if you want to satisfy relation, like if you have the polynomial of a certain degree, and at a random point, and this is a very important, at a random point, the probability that it will have the it will have the root is negligible in a large enough field. Like as a consequence. By the way, uh, just equal because this point will exist. Yeah. Uh, so well, in principle, if we go back to Go all the way back to the the start. In principle, let's say we can we have a way. This is deep light protocol, which we didn't cover, but there is a way how we can choose this check as a random point. And here you here you're good. I mean, it's a random point. Everything here, you know, the degrees up front. Uh, so you can just check and get. The, uh, you can make the check with enormous soundness. At a very small price, if you do it as a random point in the field, and you can do this. Uh, the problem is, as Kostya said, we work with uh, in the fry, depending on the parameter delta. And if your delta is small, your proof size is large. If your delta is larger, for the same soundness, your proof size is smaller. So you really want to work with a large delta. In stars, it's not a problem. If you take a large enough large delta, it's <laughs> like there are some limitations actually, but let's skip it. You take a large delta, so you have this case, you have this intersection. Uh, so in principle, as a random point, you can actually take any of those polynomials and pull the value for this one of those as a random point. And you can do it for everything which comes in this equation. Well, up to some certain extent. And the best case how you can satisfy this equation at the random point is well for one polynomial you have these few options as a random point. For another one you have this option, like this set of options. And you can pretty simply get a soundless error for this case. Like it will depend on the number of the average size for each polynomial, like how many values you can pick from these intersections and the number of polynomials divided by field size. This is very simple, but in Stark it doesn't matter because uh, 
even while you pulled all those values, you actually satisfy every constraint. Because constraints are known to the verifier as a setup space. So in start verifier, you literally check every constraint. But this is quite hard limitations why you have to optimize for constraints. You have to have them efficiently computable. Um, in NARCs which don't work with layered circuits, like ROS16, everything which is R1CS, uh, Plonk with another organization, Sonic with another organization, you work with arbitrary circuits. So you have to encode your problem somehow to have the efficient verifier. Otherwise, verifier will do the same, like apply every constraint which is linear work, or just evaluate some large degree polynomial which is still linear work. Uh, but if we do it naively, we cannot use this just naively use this case for constrained polynomials because they're different, they're important and if you allow this case in principle, let's say one of those points is your constrained polynomial but nothing stops the prover, the malicious prover from computing all other constrained polynomials and maybe for one of those actual witness or a solution is trivial it's just set of zero, so you cannot stop this you cannot predict it up front so in naive commitment scheme, you can only allow this case because you cannot allow the prover to cheat with just not picking from some set of values, but actually to pick in another problem. So for a commitment scheme, naively applied, you would have to limit the delta to this case. And this delta is equal to roughly one half minus something. Uh, this is not too large, but it sounds as for some certain sound of super size would be larger than if you would allow this case. So now we have to eliminate, well, now we want to try to, to increase the delta. So let's say we work with this case. We need some kind of second check. In this case, we say that, go back to this equation. Um, well, in this case, we, what we have to do is we need to second boundary. So we do the second boundary at the setup time. At setup time. In principle, since the problem is known to both prover and the verifier, uh, we can either do this trick with computing all of those polynomials which are at the intersection, and like picking the value, the value in the field where they are all different so we can use this. In reality, we will not do this. We will pick the random point. This is small number compared to the field itself. So the chance that there any of those two have the same value at the random point is still negligible. So we can be quite sure that we picked well and prover cannot now change the problem. And after this, we are okay with this. Uh, well, back to this case. Because we know the problem now, so our constraints are fixed at the setup space. We are okay with prover having some freedom of choice from set of values at the random point, but still, at the end of the day, you will not be able to satisfy some polynomial relationship. Well, similar to stars, but in Plonk it's different, it's much simpler. Uh, at the end of the day, you still will be limited by Schwarz in program. Trust, and now, since this part is no longer a problem, uh, we actually got to the optimum. We got to the optimum for the soundest error of the Fry protocol, which was for which we optimized about, uh, initially. So now we can have the larger delta potentially up to the limit on the right part. Uh, and this will give you a smaller proof for a safe sound which you pick up from. Well, this allows you to have full benefits of the prime. Uh, but for every uh, proof system which just uses and depends on polynomial uh, commitment. Yeah. Uh, the last thing now we have just I said the polynomial committee scheme for witness polynom for witness polynomials, the evaluation scheme with transparent setup for constraint polynomials, and uh, it can be applied for uh, some zero knowledge schemes, uh, which encode both their witness polynomials and their constraint polynomial and their, their witnesses and constraints polynom as polynomials, and then just query their values at some point and check some. Uh, polynomial relation between them. Uh, just use schwarz -Ebel. This is just exactly Plonk, where... Are there any familiar with Plonk? <laughs> 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 
for those who are familiar. For example, uh, the constraint uh, polynomials for Blanc are those selective polynomials uh, Q, Q left, Q right, Q multiple, multiplication, so on. Um, and here just uh, sending random values is for uh, for simulation of interaction. But the final step of Pong protocol is to check some relation between polynomials F1, Fn, which are constraint polynomials, and fixed as a tough phase, which encode our just problem, and witness polynomial. Uh, for example, for simplicity, our constraints will be just uh, the other products in, any, in some <coughs> sense. And here at final step, we use Schwarz dilemma. If this relation holds, if it doesn't hold at, at uh, one point, then it, uh, with overwhelming probability, it doesn't hold at the, at the, at the space. So we, not, we just need to check this relation at one point. And for this, we use uh, the commitment scheme to open the values of witness polynomials at some point z of our choice and use the relation scheme to open the values of constraint polynomials at the same point z just to speed up uh, the calculation of f from the verifies uh, point of view and then to just check the relation and that's it, it seems like to be a full uh, the last one it seems uh, like we achieved our goal, which is a system which is full transparent. Okay, the setup is, is large, but the search for the point Z. But nevertheless, it's transparent, it's succinct, because the clone itself is succinct. And uh, as we replace our commitment scheme by Fry, which works in interactive oracle proof model, uh, which uses just hashes and some theoretical information constructions, it is quantum resistance. It has fast quantum resist resist resistance, so that's that's it. Any questions? Yeah, you, you forget to mention mention that it's in principle recursive. Ah, okay, yeah. definitely. Because there is when we are not bound by any parameters in trust setup, so we may uh, we may take as many levels levels of recursion as we need for our aims. For our purposes. It can be used for any proof system which depends on polynomial commitment. And we, okay. Uh, it, it, depend, it just allows you to take any proof system which depends on polynomial commitments, and which also encodes constraints or the problem itself as a polynomial. And allows to apply this technique. Okay, so only for the implementation. Huh? Only for the implementation. Oh. Well, you can build it with transparent. I mean, yeah, you, you, can, you can take the Plonk as a, a Plonk is, well, is a proof system. It tells you the implementation and it just but is based on the fact that you can commit to the polynomial and open it as a random point, and and especially as a random point. It's our reference system we have in mind when we're trying to apply. So we just take long and to replace the kit commitment, which requires trust set up by new commitment and relations. How does it impact the, the runtime? We need to. Uh, verification time is uh, even below parent. I mean, should be below sir. Uh, what do you mean for runtime? Verification yes. or proving? Both. Uh, for now, for incomplete proving, I think Zach, I'm just twice slower than yours, but should be should be optimized to the same level. Yeah, it should be about the same. Yeah, it should it should be the same speed because here for Fry protocol, you have to do lower degree extensions of the polynomial, so which means that you just take the polynomial degree n and you have to calculate um, f of t of the size like 16 n. Which is like which is a large share, but it's only like now it's already less than fifty percent of the work. The rest of the work is just actually a lot of hashing. But it's, hashing is still not free. It it's fast. 
but it's still not free. So yeah, it should be on par, and for verification, we will see what, what will be the, uh, the fastest one. But I mean, now it's also freedom of choice. If you want to be transparent plus recursive, you can do this. You can use this. Mm -hmm. If you don't need recursion, and I mean, if you already have the trusted setup in terms of powers of tau for kit commitment, uh, you can just take those. And if you're, if it's good for a problem, you can use it. It's now a freedom of choice. I'm not even talking about like exotic instructions where you can use the transparent part as a transparent one as a like bottom levels of recursion, and then you can do the final one with uh, kit commitment. Because now you don't have a problem with curve cycles for snarks that, like, at very friendly curves. Because here, you, everything you want is a field. And the only requirement for a field is high to indicity, which is already a requirement for uh, kind of everything for polynomial relationship and with the proof systems over a very friendly curves. What do you mean, transparent proof? Like, you know, transparent proof means you don't have any trusted setup. Mm -hmm. and for K commitment, mm -hmm. public curve. Yeah, well, key commitments. Uh, so those values, alpha should be unknown. So, so we can treat it as a, an unknown variable. So you have to produce those somehow. There are ways, I mean, now we know that there are ways in efficiency and efficiency how we can produce this. And it's still universal. It's not per circuit trusted setup because it's only commitment. Commitment is universal. Uh, but still, it just requires you to cut out. But it also limits, now, you, it also limits you to a certain size of the circuit. Right. The K setup is linear. Uh, it's linear in the size of the circuit. So if you want to do a really, really huge circuit, like you know, you need to store all of these parameters, which uh, with the with the prior-based polynomial commitment scheme, it's a constant size setup. Yeah. Uh, well, just for this, I also use the quick domains. Well, uh, now you have a freedom of choice of the field, so you can get your multiple the domain of the enormous enormous size up to some limit, of course. But here there is, well, there, are, there really is a practical limit on the size of the k commitment for polynomial to which you can commit, both in terms of the storage of the parameter, and if you're in a, in a framework of some polynomial relationships, uh, usually you're also bounded by the multiple subgroup size, like for a number of fruits of unity, so to tell. Final remark, by the way, uh, you may replace k commitment in long like systems by Dark commitments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty the same thing. Yeah, it's because it's commit. I mean, it's commitment scheme. So it's and plong only depends on the commitment scheme. So if you take one and replace with another, it's, it's just a freedom of choice now. It just should be succinct if you want to work at least with uh, with a serious smart contract as a weight fire. Yes, I can. You guys have a. Uh, just give us an idea of like what the proof sizes uh, would look like. Uh, yeah, for original commitment scheme, where we wouldn't allow, uh, we, where we would require the uniqueness. Uh, I think I estimated for two in the twenty-eight polynomial for something like sixty-eight kilobytes, without some strong optimizations. For uh, relapsed uh, for unique decoding radius. Restrictions should be 68 in the kind of worst case without optimization. Uh, I cannot give a number with optimization because I have to try. No, but the degree Two in the 28. Yeah. For uh, in the case if we can use this trick with uh, evaluation scheme for a setup polynomials, it should be reduced like <coughs> five to six times. So it should be in, in 20 kilobytes limit without optimization. And by the way, maybe there is even no need to find such a point. Uh, that for evaluation schemes, maybe we, maybe we may just say that that this is kind of Schwarzschild. Yeah, yeah, just another Schwarzschild. So it's the setup is actually fast. Take probability argument here. Yeah. <coughs> and this side is what allows you to do recursion, right? Uh, for recursion, the only thing that matters is the circuit size of your last verifier, because. But it's, it's the only step that will be publicly verified. For everything else, you hide your proof sizes in a, in a private limit. So, well, the verifier circuit will depend on the choice of the hash function, or so like how you make the transcript for, uh, for the full procedure. But uh, I estimated like 223 to 4 polynomial maximum. So it's, it should be even smaller. But, well, Recursion gives you a trade-off between the size and like how much work you want to do. Yeah.
Um, okay, I think it's just time, but because it was a long session, you should have a larger break, but yeah, thank you. Yeah.